Uh, I'll share a bit about a bit, bit of context about today, a bit of context about myself. Uh, the quick background of myself is, as you can probably tell by my voice, I am very American, even though I look more Asian. Uh, so I was born and raised in San Francisco, spent my entire life there. Uh, spent a bit of time in finance, so spent some time at Goldman. Uh, started my first company in, more in college, but uh, in college I got into crypto actually through mining. Um, that was sort of the first way I tried to make money uh, to try to pay some of tuition because in the U.S. Uh, college is too expensive. Uh, so the easy way to, to make money off free dorm electricity was mining at the time. Uh, after finance, I spent some time starting my last company with the same co-founder, and then I went to do VC at uh, a VC called Co2. So we invested uh, mostly over paid for deals like uh, Starkware, OpenSea, and uh, a couple others. Uh, when our team, we tend to mostly come from San Francisco, uh, so a lot of tech companies, um, people who spent a lot of time at Airbnb, a lot of time at Robinhood, um, a couple of our engineers, they were one of the uh, fastest engineers uh, to ever make it to staff uh, at Robinhood. So maybe the first and easiest place to think about, say, is when you think about crypto generally, especially over the last two to three years, the types of apps that have the clearest part of market fit are Texas. Uh, there's a ton of different types of applications. Uh, some of them work, some of them may not work as well, but we know for sure that exchanges work. People use them a lot. Uh, and that's not just in DeFi and what we're used to, uh, but it's also in NFTs. You know, the, the biggest thing people do in NFTs is they trade them. They flip them back and forth. Uh, same thing in gaming. The biggest thing people do in gaming is they trade the in-game NFTs and the tokens. Uh, so exchanges are not just big in DeFi, but they are the main thing to do in everything in crypto so far. The, the biggest problem with DEXs is that the current infrastructure holds them back. Every DEX is really hard. It's basically impossible to do that uh, because the UX is so tough to get over Finance is so much easier to use, centralized exchange is so much easier to use. When my, me and my co-founder had first gotten started uh, building, we were building a DEX ourselves. And it became pretty obvious uh, it is really, really hard. And the biggest problem with DEXs, uh, maybe one way to think about it, is what we call the exchange trial. So between decentralization, scalability, and capital efficiency, it's very difficult to get all three. So all of the, the famous DEXs we know uh, have done two of three. Uniswap, they're very decentralized and they're very scalable, but very capital inefficient. That's a classic, classic issue that people have brought up. Order books on chain, uh, they're decentralized and capital efficient, but uh, not too scalable. And Binance is the other two. The best way to think about it today is we're the first sector specific layer one. Uh, we're specialized for trading, so the only value prop that matters to us is how do we give exchanges an unfair advantage? And when you think about specialization, especially as it applies to blockchains and L1s, um, one framework that we like to think about is the same thing that happened to databases. So when you think about what is a blockchain, it is decentral, uh, it's many databases is the best way to think about it. There are several databases that need to just sync. And what happened in Web2 with databases is we started off very general purpose. So big companies like Oracle would do all your database needs. And over time, as the industry got much bigger, they specialized into AI and ML, big use cases like Dataverse. Same thing we think will happen in Web3. Oh, when started off very early, very general purpose, because we didn't know what what there was to do in crypto. Uh, three years ago, who knew what we could do at the time? And over time, as they get more mature, they will specialize over the biggest use cases, and we think the biggest use case by far is an exchange. We're, I'm, I'm not gonna bore you guys through all the, the small <laughs> things. Uh, the best way to think about this is we've taken an L1, so like Ethereum or Solana, and we've specialized every part of the layer layer one to make DEXs work very, very well. So if you're building a DEX, you'll operate better on us 
and I would say than anywhere else. The city vision is, uh, we like to think pretty simple. Uh, we think a huge part of the financial system is gonna happen on chain. Uh, and we view SAE as the infrastructure for the future financial system. So supporting digital assets, capital markets, and we start with exchange. The easy way to think about all layer ones today is they tend to fall into two big extremes. So they're either a general purpose, which is pretty much every successful layer one we've seen, they're all general purpose, or they're the complete opposite and they're app specific. The most interesting design area we believe is actually right in the middle. Where you're not general purpose, you're not app specific, but you're sector specific. Uh, this is just a, the latest and greatest from, uh, from Traction, how we're doing. Uh, we're four months in the test net. We have a bit over 800,000 users uh, so far. A bit over 100 uh, different ecosystem projects. So I'd say in total, uh, about five, 600 developers. Um, that's globally. Uh, and 32 million test and transactions. So a lot of the teams that are building on say are either brand new teams, um, a lot of them based out of San Francisco. They come from other ecosystems like Solana, like Terra, like Near, Ethereum. And a lot of them are DEX teams that have tried building on other layer ones, uh, but realize there's a ton of issues. Right? And we try our best to solve those issues. Uh, we've, announced, uh, we've announced two ecosystem uh, funds so far, um, and all of it is dedicated to developers. Um, and we expect a huge part of that to go into Japan, in the, especially in the next couple of years. <laughs> and I'll talk about exactly why we think uh, Japan is particularly interesting. Um, over the last three weeks especially, I've met a ton of different Japanese founders, a ton of different Japanese VCs, and I think here are some of the things that, for us, are most unique uh, about Japan and what gets us most excited. So the first is, and what has historically happened for Web3 in Japan, is big companies and big layer ones, they come into Japan, they partner with companies, and then they bring value out of Japan into, back to the US, back to the US VCs. And they pull value out of the consumers and the brands in Japan and, and bring it out. How do we think about how can we bring value into Japan? How can we take teams that are globally in Europe, in the US, and bring them into Japanese technology and Japanese companies? Second is trailblazing a new path. Uh, Japan has this incredible benefit of the regulation has helped uh, the impact over the last, especially the last year. It's a very, pretty tough year, uh, but in Japan it was a little, little better than it was in Singapore or was in the US uh, or the Bahamas. Um, and that, that means Japan has an opportunity to not, not just catch up in Web3, but do it their own way. So instead of just doing what everyone else did, but a year later, being a lot more thoughtful on what's the unique path to take. And finally, the commitment. Um, what we found most unique about Japan was when a Japanese company decides to do something in crypto, it's real, it's very real. When a US company decides to do something in crypto, it's, uh, it's an NFT. Oh, we'll, we'll create an NFT and we'll see, see what happens. When a Japanese company decides, it is the real deal. And you're seeing that happen in stable coins, you're seeing that happen especially in DeFi, and that's one thing that we can talk a lot more about. So thank you for taking the time. That's uh, a bit about it. Thank you, Jack.